How's it going, everyone? We have such a special treat for you all. You're about to witness disc golf history at the 2021 Professional Disc Golf World Championships presented by GRIP6. We would love to thank the patrons for making this coverage possible. We could not do it without the 4,000 plus supporters that we have from all of you. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. That's good enough, let's go. Oh wait, picture, stay where you are, stay where you are. Picture. I could be the next world champion. I can be the next world champion. I could be the next world champion. I could be the next world champion. I can be the next world champ. I could be the next world champion. And if you think I don't want it as much as the rest, you haven't been watching. Hello and welcome to the final day of the 2021 PDGA Professional World Championships presented by GRIP6. We are in Ogden, Utah at the fort with just 18 holes left to decide the world champion. Big Sexy Barry here with you, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. It's the end of the worlds as we know it, and I cannot wait to watch this round unfold. Paul Macbeth, 31 under, followed right behind by James Conrad at 30. He's scrambling well, fourth in the field, 63%. C2 percentage, really good at over a third. Kevin Jones tied with James, one back. C1 putting 97% for four rounds, incredible. And Calvin Heimberg, also one back. C1 putting 97%, 84% fairway. Let's get going, hole one, par three, 315. Over the creek to get in bounds, get short of the river to stay in bounds and see if you can find the green for a birdie. Speaking of the end of the world as we know it, I do feel fine. I think you guys would agree. Welcome to fine? the 2021 PDGA Professional right. Disc Golf World Championships. This is our MPO lead card. Yeah. First on the tee pad today, currently at 211 strokes from Huntington Beach, California. He is a five-time PDGA World Champion. Let's give it up for Paul McBath. <laughs> Our next competitor is sitting at 212 strokes from Blacksburg, Virginia. Let's give a warm welcome to James Conrad! <laughs> also at 212 strokes from Greenland, Arkansas, Kevin Jones! <laughs> Rounding out the card at 212 strokes, Calvin Heimberg! <laughs> You guys been killing the announcing all week. A huge thank you to all the volunteers. Paul McBeth has got to be the favorite coming in. Five-time world champion looking for his sixth title. Scariest player in the field, and he's got the lead to start. And he's thrown a beautiful shot on one. Stays in bounds, and we'll have a short birdie putt. Not necessarily the hole you want to turn the camera around, but he does pump the brakes right there before the creek, and that's going to be almost a tap-in birdie. And that's huge because if you go out of bounds there, you don't get to play it from where you went out of bounds. You have to proceed to the drop zone, which is 65, 70 feet with a low ceiling. So important to stay in bounds in this hole. James a little bit left, and as we saw Paul in the open during his intro, he has what can only be described as world's face. I've seen it a dozen or so times. <laughs> yeah. It usually goes a certain way when he starts looking like that. Kevin with a turnover forehand. That looks fantastic. Oh, he is parked. Beautiful shot. 
Perfect turn, perfect shape. Perfect amount of pace. And our round is underway, folks. Calvin Heimberg, beautiful shot, and we are off. We are running. The crowd, 1,400 deep. Energy is in the air, folks. Ah. Just low for James. You see how close Paul came to going into the river here. Nice start. Good putt there. And if you've been watching our coverage all week, you know that these first two holes at the fort are so important to birdie because starting in hole three, the course starts to really show how difficult it is. And the first two holes are kind of a reprieve in that sense. The two easiest holes on the course, you really feel like you got to get those birdies early to buffer for what is yet to come later on in the round. And as you can see, the trees are moving a little bit. It is a bit breezy. Just to add an extra element for a final day, I mean, it's not going to be perfectly calm ever at the finals at the World Championships. The disc golf gods just will not allow that. Yeah, and I, I feel we should mention the 1,400 spectators. That is a sold-out crowd. It was a COVID-limited event. Spectator passes in high demand. I mean, I'm answering DMs online like, dude, I don't sell the spectator <laughs> passes. I cannot get you in here and I'm sure they'd reach out to you because you are right there at the top of chase card and you are just two back of the lead not I mean, only that i don't know you <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone i'm trying to win a world championships short hole two now with this right to left cross one, it's gonna be tough to get the height right as you see Paul oh, get it perfectly right oh, and wow. almost drills it. <laughs> no and I can't help way. but imagine that if he doesn't hit that, that thing is definitely juiced long out of bounds. So a really good break as well. Oh, I totally agree. If he clears that log in the air, he's out of bounds and he's going to a drop zone. And Kevin electing to go away from the grenade play. Kind of surprising, you know, it's something that he did early in the week because it kept working and maybe something changed in his confidence throughout the week. Uh, maybe the wind conditions. I feel like it has to be something about the wind or the fact that he was admitting that he didn't think it was the smartest play, but it just yeah. kept working. I mean, the first round or the second round of the world championships, you can get away with those decisions and it, might seem a little fun, but the last round, if you do something like that and it, did, and it does not work, it, it's it got to have an extra weight behind it. Calvin came short, but he didn't roll down the hill, I don't think. So he should have a pretty doable putt, roughly 40 feet. And unlike Paul, he kind of took a little bit off. So did um, Kevin. So that height that I was talking about was super important as James catches a nice oh. break as well. I mean, I Look. feel like if you do clear the log with that with that uh, right to left win, it's gone. And that really was a good perspective of how close that road is to that green. Kevin up onto the green. Here you see Calvin. Wind really starting to blow now. Oh, a good effort. Just a bit low. Expectations must be high for Calvin Heimberg. He's been playing so well. James Conrad with his first birdie. Nice one to get. 
You have to get one of two of the starting holes. Mm-hmm. Or two. Two would be nice. Two would be really nice as well with a little metal hit to yeah, back it up. Maybe even yeah. ace one. Look. Give me a buck from the from the other three competitors. Yeah, and then the 1,400 uh, spectators also a buck, so that's already. He's well in the money for this world championships. I'm Paul Uliberry with today's Bushnell Hole Breakdown. You can find the Edge Disc Golf Range Finder at the link in the description. Hole three at the fort is unique to the course, being only one of a few with elevation. Normally you could use this 34 foot drop in elevation to your advantage to make sure you clear this OB river, but not here. These guardian trees make it tough to aim down. Now playing true to this intimidating 516 foot number, things can get a bit dicey. Par is good on hole three, but let's see how it plays out. Couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> and we're going from the two easiest holes to the three hardest holes, starting with three being the third hardest. 3.42 average. It is always daunting standing up there in the tee box. Wind such an important factor here. Macbeth long on the first two holes, both holes with almost no room long. So you can tell he is aggressive today. This is wide and high and crushed. Can it find a way through those trees? Today, a helping wind, right to left tail. Oh, so wow. it's easier. You can hang it out wide and let the wind kind of help you take it into the left side. And that's going to leave him another putt for birdie. These guys obviously possess the power to not have to really give it everything they have. And so it's a, honestly a comfortable distance for them. This is looking pretty good as well. This gets a little, little bit short left, oh, yeah. maybe, but not too bad. Oh, that's fine. The crowd likes that. This is flipping up and is crushed. Oh. Guardian tree. Wow, that was going long. Kevin has such an incredible flip up game, such control over understable drivers and in places where other people feel more comfortable just going over stable and making sure that they go left. Kevin feels the confidence to flip things up and it's uh, it pays off for him big time. Truly incredible how the best players in the world can adapt to the oh, stability yes. as you see Calvin just absolutely park that. I mean, we're used to playing a little bit lower elevation and obviously going higher. The discs do become more stable. And so you only have a certain amount of time during the duration of the week to figure out your bag. And obviously these guys have done it better than the rest of the field. James lining up a long look for birdie. Hmm. One of the things about the Ford is you're going to always have at about 45 to 40 feet these low hanging <coughs> limbs, which makes it a bit tougher for the competitors to get the height on the putt. As you see, these both come out up short, but the camera really doesn't do it justice. They all have those low hanging limbs that is it's tough to get it higher. Plus at the elevation, it's going to drop a bit faster. So. The four adds all these kind of little tiny details that make it just tough right outside the circle. And James still has some distance here for his par. I like to see him really taking his time on this one. Oh, no. 
James going to suffer an early bogey, and Paul, even though he's didn't make this, he's kind of off to a dream start here with two other competitors not taking birdie. Calvin, the only person left with a chance, and he does connect on the birdie putt, but and that's going to bring Calvin to two under. Just one back of Macbeth. Talking about dreamy. The new haircut for Calvin is looking Ooh. nice. <laughs> He's a dapper young fella with a lot of talent and many looks. <laughs> From the outrageous glasses to the flowy llama-like hair. <laughs> Man of many styles and talent. Yeah. His, I would say his looks range kind of from like bored and sleepy to like bored and sleepy wearing outrageous glasses. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the, the spectrum you're looking at. Oh my goodness. Hole four, par four, 655 feet. This is one of the hardest holes. You heard it from Germ. The tunnel you have to hit has just a little bit of a left jog in it before you find the corner. That makes this hole so difficult to hit the line to get all the way up there to access the green. I have not personally ever seen a human do it. I know that people do do it, but me personally, I've not seen it happen. It is that difficult. If there was a day to do it, um, if I could give these guys a little heads up, I would say do it now. Do it now, Calvin. It's kind of been the same pace. We've seen him throw the shot all week. Hits the fairway beautifully. Even that shot, I, I must think that's still 70 feet short of. I think he's just going with a yeah. rock there. So yeah. just, just playing for the fairway. In the hole's defense, I do feel like this does play as par five. And mm -hmm. so he's playing for four, obviously, with um, mid-range to putter off the tee. And, and if it was just called a par five, the score range on it, the average score would play as a pretty decent par five at 4.63 i mean oh that one had a bit of a chance if he could have got inside that last tree still had speed was still flattening he's going to find himself on the left edge i think kevin jones is trying he's throwing the shot that can get that birdie if that was higher that might have had a chance but that is now in a bunch of trouble yeah to be on the left behind trees on a hole that breaks left he's gonna have very limited options this is becoming my favorite hole on the course because if you are off the fairway it is so punishing it demands you to be in the middle that's why this kick that james just got was so favorable because left and right is just a pitch up yeah it allows him to actually throw with quite a bit of speed and he has done an amazing job just getting around the corner that sets up a very manageable third shot to the pin. Looks like Kevin has a mid-range in his hand. Not able to go for a whole lot of distance, just trying to get back to the middle. Really well done. Yeah, that crowd will tell you how difficult that shot was. I mean, wasn't a bunch of distance, but just getting back into position is paramount. And just the mid-range again. All right, now we're in Calvin Heimberg neighborhood. I mean, that's a long putt, maybe 80 feet, but we've seen him drop some bombs thus far this tournament. Okay, that's going to be really tough from there. He's going to have to play a hyzer flip up with this putter, kind of pushing the right side of the fairway, which is wow. very scary. Yeah, this is not a great spot. Needs to get left, but not too left. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that is unbelievably talented. <laughs> that is so good. This is a little bit better. You can He can see the basket from his spot. These guys are managing out of position shots so well. I mean, this is 
this is the World Series Game Seven. This is the Super Bowl, and if there were any nerves, we haven't really seen it this far. Look at we're even seeing a sidearm from James. Gets a nice kick. He's going to have a look. Yep. If you get off the fairway scrambling, the only thing going to be scrambling is your brain because <laughs> there is nothing off of this fairway, I'm telling you, unfortunately, from experience. And he, you were right. He did have he did have about an 80, 80, 90 footer. Just no angle, really. But James is going to be the only person with a difficult putt left to save the par. Mentioned that jump putt percentage intro he's been making so many of these he, oh no and it's gonna be back-to-back -back bogeys for james early yeah and you just cannot afford mm. to take bogeys on this course oh especially when paul's throwing approach shots like that he's gonna fall back four but if there is a hole to take a bogey i would suggest this one <laughs> because of how difficult it is. Yeah, not losing all that much to the field, but a stroke is a stroke either way, and he lost a stroke to everybody on the card there on the fifth, or on the fourth, now on the fifth. Par four, 540 feet. This one, even a more narrow gap, but the tee shot doesn't need to be nearly as long to get into position. This one, if you throw straight with the mid-range turnover or a short forehand of maybe 280 feet, you find yourself in an attacking position where you, you're up to the corner. You still have a lot of trees to navigate through, and you still have a river right behind the basket to keep you honest. Calvin going with this eagle. If this shot is thrown well, this can get into an incredible position. <sighs> oh, oh, no. no. Tell us what's over there, Germ. Well, I actually have been over there one time before in mixed doubles, and you're looking at a wall of nothingness. Not, on, not only that, there's actually a mandatory that he's going to have to fight his way right of from the left side, and that's really going to take... Oh, give me the lovely kick one more to boot. I think that mm. might have saved him from being too far. He's still out of position, but he didn't miss the mandatory. He's short of the mandatory, Exactly. Correct? Yeah, that will be tricky. But that again, yeah, that's completely out of any, ch any realm of possibility for the birdie. So that's going to be... Oh, oh, no. Oof. Oh, no. Out of bounds? There is OB on the left side of that mound, and... All the way to 18 or to the scoring tent. Perhaps. Yeah, and that has unfortunately found the out of bounds. That, that really is just there for precaution. Uh, I'm surprised to see that we found somebody kick that far. James, what an opportunity here with the rest of the card, at least two strokes ahead of him and everyone in danger to just put one right down the fairway. And I'm curious if it would almost be... A playable option why well, it is an option for kevin to just re-t because over there is so pinched oh, off yeah that's an interesting play i mean it's hard to think of that at the time okay so there's a drop zone okay so you don't have to play it that's that's fortunate yeah very fortunate if you had to play that from ob i think you're right i think that's just a, a re-t situation good little sidearm roller there from paul you know Understanding the course, seeing those logs there, knowing that if he puts a little too much on it, maybe those logs will stop him right there in the fairway. So, this drop zone is actually a pretty fortunate. I mean, not an easy shot at all, but I mean, I think it's easier to save the par from the drop zone than it would be if you ever had to play it. Oh, without question. Yeah, I mean, he. That was an advance that was helpful for Kevin, but does not take advantage of the opportunity and is kicked into the crowd. Big shot for Calvin. Yeah, very pinched off. Oh, what? Oh, oh no, the very God. last one. 
That was incredible otherwise. Okay, now this is James and that turnover just <sighs> doesn't sneak through. And that is tough over on the right side. I mean, anything on four and five that's right and left, incredibly difficult. Great angle here. Big skip. That, that is hitting a tiny window. Well done for Macbeth. All right, so James has got the guaranteed par in the pocket while the other guys are scrambling hard just to save maybe even just a bogey at best, really. I guess Paul has an opportunity for the par, and Calvin will also have a long putt for the par, but Kevin Jones is going to be taking red on this hole. Oh, sit down. Ooh, a great effort. And now he's going to have a little bit extra coming back for the bogey. A little deja vu there I thought was about to happen. We saw him hit a big one, I, I believe, first or second round from that same spot or maybe a little deeper. Paul from range. Are you kidding me? This man is on a mission for six Wow. 50 footer. Maybe more. 60. Here's what I want you guys to see. You Ugh. see him push the ceiling that I was talking about. That's the fort. He had to legitimately hit teeny tiny limbs. It didn't cost him anything just to give that thing a chance. I mean, that was a picture perfect putt. Calvin is not happy that he's 7 2 <laughs> right now. Yeah, that was oh. an uncomfortable crouching lie in a double bogey for Calvin, and that derails that momentum that he built up early. Early kicks are just a disaster on hole five. Okay, last two holes. Pars are a hot commodity. And... Macbeth is feeling pretty lucrative right now. Yeah. Yeah. And 10 total birdies between four and five in the last two holes. Got to give a shout out to Lance Brown, who birdied hole four two of the three times we played the hole. And there was just a total of six birdies for the entire tournament. Incredible stuff there for, for Lance Brown. Wow. Hole six, par three, 324 feet. This one has a very tricky window. Paul's going to try to get this high forehand. A little bit of flex required to get to the basket. Well, maybe not. If you go way up there, can he miss the trees? I don't think so. There's too much that wide. Gives him a long, well, probably about only 20 feet farther than the one he just hit. So The thing that you're looking at off the tee here is you just want to miss that plum cherry on the hill just barely. If you miss it by a lot high left right you're most likely going to hit a branch but james just barely gets over the top of it and look at the result there i mean it's not parked but it's much better than paul's and and it's a good shot yeah and that's what you're looking for you're looking to turn it over not to drift directly at the basket per se as kevin what are you doing oh wow. boy <laughs> okay kev i'm not sure yeah that might be might be bunker to those trees guarding him. Yeah, yeah. that's bunkered. Mm -hmm. Good distance. Yeah, but call to three. As Billy Crump would say, the torturance was off a little bit on that one. Just missed the furtherance. Oh, he got the furtherance, but missed the torturance. <laughs> okay, great skip off the hillside right there to give him a give him a look. Did not think that we were going to be hearing, hearing a billyism this early in the morning. Calvin. 
off the top once again. And again. he's going to have to make a testy putt once again. I do like that from Calvin, though, not leaving anything low. Hyper aggressive. Give everything a chance this, this final round. Okay. Call it 70. Oh, my. Macbeth wow. is just dialed, folks. Like, this guy is going hyper-aggressive lines. I mean, it's day five of the world championships. Uh, When's the last time you, we didn't see him absolutely dialed? Yeah, no, I, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's awesome. James. There it is. Big putt there. And those 30-footers, I cannot tell you how important those are for the confidence to move forward. Uh, at this course? Especially I'm, just striping it on the pole. Like, yeah. that was an absolutely perfect putt. Calvin connecting on the par. I can't remember a park job on this course. <laughs> yeah, it's, you have to make those 30-footers. Exactly. One way or another, you're going to hit a tree or you're going to hit a root or you're going to get stuck in the sand and you're going to have so many putts from that range throughout the event. And this last round, if you're making those, it does so much for your confidence. Hole seven is a birdie opportunity, but it's a bogey opportunity as well. This one has some really tough rough, especially on the left. Our players need to hit that initial gap with a flat shot that's going to fade left late. If you keep it too flat, you're going in the water. James Conrad, even through six holes. This looks good. This looks really good. Maybe a little spicy. Oh, oh. that's just... How do you get over that log and down before the log behind it which separates good shots from the creek? He's probably throwing a putter. That's probably how. That is just incredible touch and accuracy. Fantastic. Wow. Here, Paul, calling for this to stay up. It can slide in under. Okay. An obstructed putt, edges circle. Same little stump you hit coming in there with the nice stuff. All right, course designer, we see you. Well done. <laughs> I think it's course designer 842 field 30. All these guys you could legitimately oh, wow. draw a string on all of their initial shot lines. That's just like perfectly hyped. Yeah, on Every single one of those. Can Calvin find that same string? Yes. <laughs> the answer is absolutely I mean, yes. Oh, wow. Just a That's little. Fine. Yeah, he's okay. still up there. A good forward kick, but man, it, that looked like that was going to be clean as well. Oh, no, so close. So close, so many holes in a row. Yeah, wow. I mean, missing low, missing high twice, now missing low again. Calvin, that close. Those four go in, and he's actually at 34 down. And speaking of 34 down, man is locked in. If we can take a... If you want to... Run that back and take a look. He brushes a couple more limbs right there, using the height all the way. Kevin, nice putt. Great birdie. The greens are so specific on this course to where if you don't hit exactly what the course designer wants, it's just going to be always a little tough one. You're not going to see a closer drive. I, you, you can hardly put it any closer than what James just did right there. That's, And now that's two birdies in a row. And for the first time since his birdie putt on hole two, he's under par. So one under for James now. 
Hole eight, you heard Germ say it. Why are trees whole? It's that same one we just saw from Chris and myself. Forehand, a popular play, trying to hit that high airspace and move right. There is that wall there. If you come up short, there's also some OB on the left. And you saw those trees that guard the pin late, just on the left side of the green. So these guys have to do a lot of things right in order to pick up a birdie on the elevated basket of eight. I'm sweating. <laughs> Me too. My palms are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. Here's James going with the turnover. Very tough shot for a backhand player. Oh. And that is almost perfect, but he catches a, one of the little guardian limbs there that keeps him from having the power to get all the way there. Still a great shot, honestly that shot shape is only done by the best in the world. Macbeth a little too high. That's going to catch early limbs, but still manages to fight its way forward. Going to be an obstructed putt. But actually not that bad of a break. If that drops straight down, that becomes a difficult par to save. This looks yummy. Oh, yeah. I'd eat it. <laughs> it's a good shot. Calvin lining that up. Oh. And the YR trees hole can quickly become the peace hole and peace out because that one kicks way left. I mean, actually not as punishing as that can be i mean he's actually looking at a putt oh wow oh. you're right i didn't i didn't think that came back all the way okay didn't get punished for that Ooh, good effort macbeth I'm sure he's nervous, but on the surface, he looks calm and ready. Ah, does not drop the bomb, though. Yeah, that would have been huge to take advantage of even hitting the um, limbs coming out of there and getting a putt. Oh, no. And Kevin unable to make a stroke on the card. Huge opportunity. And you can just feel feel the pressure now mounting for all of these people. You can tell even on those ones one inch low, but it hurts triple from the rounds before. Big putt for Calvin. That is a world-class comeback putt. That might be a 99% are in the backyard when you're thinking this is for the world championships. But when it's actually for the world championships, it becomes much different. Yeah, especially after watching Kevin miss a bit low right there. Get in there. James, a little, not quite his normal putting stroke there. Maybe a little bit of nerves there. But it's in. Seeing some nervy putts go in can also help build confidence. And seeing a bunch of pars come up on the board could build the confidence for myself and Chris Dickerson. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hole nine, par five, 778 feet. This one is a straight shot off the tee. You'd like to get 400 plus if you've got it to get up past the mandatory and set up a shot where you can really make a lot of progress around the corner down there towards the green. That big mound is a great guardian, really, really hard to find your way all the way in there, though we did see Paul make the eagle in the last round. There were three eagles in the second round out here at the fort. Incredible stuff from the field. This is just a dream three. 
And in today's round, we did have a right to left crosswind, which is probably the oh, most difficult yes. win for this hole. But James is unfazed by that and picks the perfect stability, perfect angle, and gets around the corner. James doesn't necessarily have an attack for the eagle play. I really believe that it requires a forehand, but he can get himself up to a long look for the eagle. And as Paul has hit first available, I mean, everything has been going so well for Macbeth, and this is going to be the first time that he's really going to be in trouble. And not only that, I mean, there is that drop zone if you miss the Mando, but he didn't miss the Mando line. So it's honestly as bad as it could possibly be because yeah, now he sure. has to keep going up the fairway and he's going to be completely blocked off as we saw a nice solid shot from Kevin to the right side of the fairway, which will open up a second shot to get around the mandatory. I think it becomes a much easier hole to get a par on if you just go ahead and throw straight out of bounds in some ways than if you throw anything other than a perfect shot off the tee. That's in the running for perfect shot. Calvin takes a nice little kick there. He's got an opportunity. And wow, this is a spot I am sure Macbeth did not get any practice from. Forehand roller. <gasps> early hit and now i don't think that i mean par is possible but it's gonna take some work yeah birdie is gone oh really great really great stuff there for it to stay in the middle though because now he does have just a straight shot to go it's a stock shot to get around the mandatory but you have to keep it tight if you go too straight the if angle they... yeah that's well done there's one thing we all know about Paul. He keeps the game tight. Yeah, that's right. So, and that's about the, the range where he threw his second shot from when he did get the eagle. So par is still possible. And this is aggressive. Kevin going left route. Too, turn, too much turn. But I still got to skip. Yeah. And if you don't put yourself in position to look at that eagle... So important for that third shot that you are left. Giving, your, giving yourself the best angle coming in around the mound. If you can see the basket on your next shot after this one, it is so helpful. Beautiful. And, Jim, you told us that, you know, James not having an option to go sidearm, but there is a backdoor route. You can flex something, miss a couple trees, and have the opportunity to get the eagle. You know, he's got to be thinking that. I mean, three back of the leader who's in danger right now. This could be an opportunity to make some moves. And just a good shot. Yeah, I do like that play, though. Just making sure he sees Macbeth struggling on the hole. It'll take a miracle for Paul to get up and down. Maybe he's just, you know, playing a little chess. Maybe I can claw my way back a little bit, grab one here, grab one there. Really important shot here. Flex looks to be fading early. Too soon. Just a brief moment too soon. If that just stays on that Anheuser for another moment, he is home free. And that's the world. I mean, he looks in perfect control, and then all of a sudden... One bad shot turns into two bad shots, and now he's scrambling on what could be one of the easiest scoring holes if you get off the tee. Not the greatest shot there from Kevin. Shot was actually his, his second shot was a lot better than I even thought. Yeah, and that's going to be a tap in birdie for James. And what a time to do it. Calvin, he needs to get this up and down for the birdie. And that's just, that's a great shot there. It looks pretty open and easy, but that is a very touchy forehand. It's hard to throw those forehands less than 100 feet with accuracy. It's not something you do in practice a lot. It will be a bogey for Macbeth. Wow. 
And Kevin Jones also takes advantage. Out of position and ending up huge jump putt Jones making that one. And so the entire card going to chip away two shots at the lead. And that is going to make the final nine holes at the World Championships so exciting. My goodness. And that just shows you, like I said, one of the more scorable holes on the course. And then all of a sudden, leader takes bogey and... <laughs> Probably a good percentage of even the second card found a birdie on that hole. Wow. Everybody kind of moving along at a similar pace, uh, save perhaps Chris Dickerson, five under 33 for the tournament, and now square with Macbeth. I'm there one back, tied with Conrad and Jones. Have we ever seen a more highly I, contested world championship? Not in my memory. This I is can't incredible. Think of anything like this. <laughs> this I thank you, Founders Club. Let's go ahead and stop. Let's start the back nine so we can get right into this. I the anticipation is killing me. Yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. 